Okay, now that the mechanicals are working, it's time to get the tractor wired up. Uh, right over here, I have two long pieces of two-aught cable. Uh, those are like, oh, I don't know, um, eight feet long. So I've got those just kind of up and over the front axle so those can loop up into the front of the tractor. I also have down here a brake cable, just uh, like a bicycle brake cable, a cable inside of a tube. So I intentionally left um, like a six inch by 14 inch area in front of the motor controller for my balance of system. So um, we're taking a look at, you know, the main fuse, the contactor, all that stuff. And I have this piece of old scrap aluminum plate, which uh, fits in here pretty close, pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'll just set all my components on here, decide where I want them, mark the holes, drill them, bolt everything down so I can just put everything in here. So just approximately, uh, the potentiometer is going to go here. Um, then I'm going to use an angle bracket because I, I found it was about the right height to match up with the spring-loaded arm here. The hole is about the right height. Um, and also, the hole is the right size uh, for the wire to go right through from the cable, but not the uh, sleeve of the cable. So I'm going to put that about here, and then that way the throttle will work uh, by the cable pulling this arm. Um, originally, I thought I'd just use a single inline fuse holder, but I found I had this multi-fuse holder around. That'll be good because then I can have separate fuses for the motor controller, but then I could also add uh, headlights, for example. Um, just to complete the circuit, um, I'll also add a ground bus bar, put that over here. Main contactor, gonna go about here, and the fuse is gonna be way over here, and that's just because I've got a real short cable to the disconnect. And with fuses, one of the first things you wanna do is go straight from the battery, fuse very first thing, and then everything else. Um, so mostly this is just all mark the stuff, mark the holes, drill it, and then mount everything down with nuts and bolts. And then I'll just start assembling components onto my piece of aluminum plate here. Okay, that's not going anywhere. Here's the potentiometer. Again, this is gonna align with that for the cable. So that's our throttle there. And there we go, the components all mounted down in place. So the very first thing is to run the battery positive cable from the main battery pack to the fuse holder. That's pretty much always the first thing you want to do is fuse the battery pack. So here I've got a 500 amp fuse and then the cable leading away from the battery holder goes over to that big red disconnect key. Coming back from there, the cable is going to connect to the main contactor. Now coming off of the main contactor, I'm going to use a bus bar. Uh, this is a bus bar from uh, one of those Nissan Leaf packs. It's a little bit longer than what I need, so uh, I have to bridge between these two distances. They're also offset, so I'm going to have to bend it. Uh, but before I do that, that'll get in the way of uh, the red wires here from the 12 volt battery. So I want to plug those in first, and then I'm starting to make the connection for the 12 volt system to that fuse holder and then tuck that wire out of the way. Uh, the circuit's completed by the negative 12 volt uh, black wire down to the bus bar here. And since this is all metal, this is also uh, grounding the rest of the system on the 12 volt negative. I just need to snug that down good and tight. And then coming back to the bus bar, I gave it a couple of bends. I'm reusing the one hole that was already in it I got the bends to match the height pretty well. I just need to mark and drill a hole for the other end. Then after doing that, I put some uh, red heavy duty heat shrink over it and use the heat gun to shrink it down. Then I just assemble the bus bar down between the uh, 
main contactor and the B plus. So I just crimped this lug onto the two aught cable, added some heat shrink. Uh, this is going to be my battery plus cable out to the motor. Um, so that is actually going to connect to B plus on the motor right here. It's going to go uh, directly under all that. Here's a big copper lug I just crimped onto this two aught welding cable. It's using one of those little hydraulic crimpers. And then of course I'm also going to put some heat shrink on there. And this one is going to the M- minus on the motor controller. I am wiring up the key switch. This is going to go right there and that will complete the 48 volts to power the contactor. Well, this is how far I got today. Uh, the machine is basically wired up. It's not real pretty. I gotta clean it up, use some zip ties and everything. But it's essentially wired up. Um, up on the dash, I've got the key switch now runs the main contactor and the old PTO switch uh, runs the logic. So that just turns on all the brains to the, uh, um, the motor controller here. And then um, over on the side, I've got my power disconnect. So I turn that on, uh, power goes through the precharge resistor, which is hiding back there. I wait, give it about 10 seconds and then uh, turn on the power that contactor closes. And as you can see, it's shut right now. This whole thing is powered up and ready to go except I got to the point I did not yet uh, get the motor connected. Instead, uh, the motor cables I just have down here to a multimeter because at least that way I could test if it worked. So I've got the throttle here, which is not connected to a foot pedal yet, but that goes up and that pulls on that little arm up there. So <laughs> I cannot do this one-handed, but let's see if I, no, I can't. But if I pull that, if I, I pull that cable, this little arm here moves and check out what happens on the voltmeter. So it's now variable. Um, it's not a nice smooth response because there's no uh, motor hooked up yet to it. But tomorrow um, I will run those power cables back under up and to the electric motor, and then we should have something. See you tomorrow.